Hello and welcome in nursing yes. webinar. Myself Shanti, the Vice President of Nursing from Mishada Hospital. Uh, and a very happy and prosperous new year to all the nurses, all the dear student nurses, friends at national and international platform. I must not fail to acknowledge the abundant support and view I'm receiving from your end. Heartfelt thanks to everybody. And uh, we will be discussing about the advanced surgical gastro series in this entire month. And having said so, let us welcome our clinical pioneer and director, Dr. Vijay Kumar Baragaru, who is our senior surgical gastro, hepatobiliary, and um, you know, uh, robotic, bariatric, and uh, different advancement in gastro series. He's in short, there is, uh, you know, he's as he has performed 100 robotic GI surgeries in very short period of time at high tech uh, Yashoda unit. And we welcome you, sir. And uh, we are very honored and privileged to have you with us today. Thank you very much, all of you. I all welcome you to this wonderful uh, webinar, which is uh, made a mark of for itself among the nursing uh, fraternity. So we will uh, have a good interaction today. And feel free to take active uh, part in this program. Thank you, sir. And let me also welcome Ms. Suja Sridhar, the DGM nursing from uh, Yashoda High Tech Unit. She's very able and skilled in all dimensions of nursing excellency. I welcome you, Suja. Thank you, Mom. As you can share the slide, let us talk about the robotic environments, advancement in GI surgeries. Thank you, Mom. Yes. Myself, Suja, DGM nursing, Yashoda Hospital, High Tech City. Here. Let us discuss. Oh, no, no, you can go back to the first slide, the second slide, yes. Second slide. Yeah, we are just going to discuss about robotic GI, robotic surgery. And uh, here we would like to ask sirs a very valuable opinion on will robotic surgeries continue transforming the modern crucial surgeries in the field of GI, sir? Yeah, yeah definitely, yes, because. Um, as you know, medicine keeps evolving and we have to move with the wave. We all started with open surgery. Then we know that uh, to make uh, the patient's outcome better, to make the patients more comfortable, to improve the overall um, clinical outcome, we move to laparoscopy. And now the way forward is robotic surgeries. And uh, just not because uh, uh, it's a fancy thing, but it has got huge advantages uh, for the patient and also to some extent for uh, the medical fraternity also. So the robotic surgery is going to be the future, definitely, mark my words, and uh, it's going to go a big way, big way. So that is the reason we all should be aware of what a robo is and how it works and how we as a, a nursing fraternity also should be adept uh, to the latest technology. Yes. So let us see what we have in uh, the rest of the session. Over to you, Suja. Thank you, ma'am. So let's have a discussion on robotic surgery. There are three main components of robotic surgery system. The nurse must know. That is computer console, which is totally controlled by the surgeon, and the camera, which is fixed in the end of the arm of the robot, and high-definition 3D camera, and surgical cart with the robotic hands. So, sir, as we are just looking at the images, and maybe your uh, all these scrub and circulating nurses must be looking at the environment. So okay. my or we would like to just understand from you that all these three designated areas, which is already seen in the OT setup, the dynamic of communication from your end to the nurses, how it is managed, sir? Yeah, so as uh, Suja said, there is a patient console, there's a surgeon console, and there's a vision card. Yes. So patient console is where all the arms, the camera arms are attached, and that we attach to the patient. That means we put uh, small boards, Rokas and we connect this whole patient console robot to that one. And there's a vision card where all the procedures that is being done can be visualized on the monitor, which the bedside team, the nurses uh, can see. And then there's a surgeon console where the surgeon will be sitting and operating. So the communication, there is very good audio visual uh, facility available. So when I'm sitting on the surgeon console, anything I speak is uh, heard to the entire OR. It's in the operating room as a mic. So there is a mic provided in the surgeon console and there is a mic near the patient console. So if the nurse speaks something near the patient, I can hear it uh, as, as though she's talking on a mic. One. Second most important thing to interact is on the vision card that the monitor you can see there. 
which is there near to the patient side, the nurse can mark on the screen. If she marks on the screen, I can see on my surgeon console. So she can tell, if I tell her to do suction, so nurse can point there, sir, can I do suction here? Do you, do you want here? So if she marks that, I can see, yes, I then I'll tell, I, I say, yes, you do suction there. Or I can tell, move to the right, move to the left. So we don't have to visually see each other. During open surgery or uh, laparoscopic surgery, I tell the sister or I take her hand and tell you do suction here or you be here. So here we can do everything without seeing each other. And uh, there's a good audio mic system provided at uh, multiple ends. Oh, yeah, such a very you know interesting. I think this is all linked with the AI because I think the the console has got this, you know, voice modulation and uh, conveying the voice too. Yeah, exactly. It's all based on the AI between the yeah. surgeon and the nurse. So although we are far, although my scrub nurse say always we want to be working as a team, we have to be together. Although the surgeon is far away from uh, my favorite nursing team, but yeah. we are very much interacted. Whatever we speak, um, uh, we can very clearly uh, know, listen everything. So do you keep looking at the uh, you know uh, camera and you speak or do you have to lift the head as well? No. No, no, no. You can see that picture, surgeon and computer console is written. Like okay. the surgeon has gone inside that surgeon console. Yes. So the moment I lift the head, the instruments will freeze. That is the beauty of robotic surgery. Oh. Yeah. So if I'm doing a laparoscopic surgery, I'm holding my instruments. If someone asks me if I turn my hand, my hand, my, if I turn my head to see that person, my hands can still move. So there can be some inadvertent injury if I'm not seeing the tissue. But in robotic surgery, that is the advantage. That's a huge safety mechanism. That the moment I remove my eyes from the eye, eye, eye lens, that is the surgeon console, the moment I remove the eyes, the instrument will freeze wherever they are. So there is no question of even a micromillimeter movement of the instrument if I am not seeing that one. Oh, this is very interesting fact which we didn't know at all. And sir, how about the... A surgery which takes a long hours like Whipple's and bariatrics and all. You got yeah. to stick that many hours to the console. Yeah, I can sit there and the advantage is that I'm sitting, I'm not standing and operating. But your eyes have to be just looking uh, at the eyes, eyes, Yeah, eyes have to be and the posture is maintained. You can see that surgeon sitting there, he's sitting straight. Yes. So the, no uh, postural um, abnormalities, there are no postural problems that you can get. And when I'm sitting here, my nurses also sit there near the bedside. Oh. They okay. can take a small stool because they don't, they'll not be doing uh, active work continuously. Yeah. They can also uh, sit there when uh, I'm doing operating and they don't have any much thing to do. They can relax. Just imagine in open surgery, if I'm doing a 10 hours people's procedure, nurses have to stand, I have to stand continuously for 10 to 12 hours. So the strain on our body translates into a reduced clinical efficiency also. So in the first hour, you are very efficient. As are uh, passed by your efficiency yeah. comes down. But here in robotic surgery, both of us are efficient throughout the procedure because we are doing in the most comfortable uh, position with high efficacy. So let us also validate many more interesting facts. Yes, so yeah, continue. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Next, you can see the surgical robot is an operating room machine completely controlled by a skilled surgeon. Here we can see the images how the OD is set up for a robotic surgery. So here, I think, sir, uh, if this is our set, yes. do you so, also instruct the nursing team to just prepare this unit before some, you know, hours? Yes. And what is the requirement of nurses towards a robotic assisted or than the traditional method of? I so, mean, there will be it, some it, ratio. Yeah, yes. this, is, this picture is exactly our own robotic system. Yes. You yes. can see that <clears throat> there are two pictures, left side and right side. On the left side of the screen, you can see that the robot is all prepared there. Yes. And they have to put the drapes for the arms. And yes. you can see that near the uh, vision card, one of our nurses is uh, yes. preparing yes. those things. And the other side, the right side of the picture, it is all ready. That yes. means the patient is painted and draped and the robot is ready. Yes. So we just have to come put the trocars and um, connect the robot to the patient. And then we go to the surgeon console. So this draping the robo arm, getting the AI activated on the robotic uh, patient console. Everything is done by the nurses. Oh, great. Everything is done by the nurses. They are so well trained and the learning curve is very short. 
uh, all our nurses, you know, we have trained almost uh, 10 nurses into robotic system now. The yeah. Seniors, juniors, everyone. So now everyone is uh, uh, very good in uh, handling the robot. Handling the robot, yes. So, sir, so, here do we, uh, the, the nurses ratio is, uh, you know, okay with the RAS or th than the traditional or conventional surgeries? We need uh, one or maximum two nurses here. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. in whichever, however major a surgery may be. Imagine if I'm doing a hepatectomy, I'll need me, myself, I need two surgeons and then I need at least three or uh, three scrub nurses and okay. then we one assistant and one uh, okay. you know, circulating. But in robotic surgery, we need only one nurse by the bedside and they can be one circulating. That's all. Oh, that's a very great. Uh, at least uh, the, uh, you know, yeah. less yeah. number of nurses can match this competency. Yes. Yeah. Also, when there's a long procedure, the, because we have in our uh, high-tech city, we have, as, as I said, we have 10 of them who are trained in robotic uh, nurse handling no robotic system. So after three hours, the nurse can uh, take a break. Okay. If there's another uh, good, important, major procedure where we need her uh, skills, then she can go there and another junior can come and uh, help me there. She so can. we can uh, shuffle the nurses also in this one. But in open surgery or laparoscope surgery, once the scrub nurse is uh, scrubbed into the procedure, there is no way she can go uh, out of the procedure. So let us also look at, as you were explaining that, you know, you are by the console and the nurse is a little far away by the patient cart and the vision cart is again, you know, giving the images uh, step by step. And yeah. uh, let us also look at the sixth uh, slide, uh, Suja. Yeah, here, sir, the dynamics of RS with AI, as I can see the vision, which is you again, master controller. Yeah. Yeah, I think your hand is occupied and it is doing some mobile scaling job, like, like somebody yeah. like, handling the steering. Yeah. And what does the what is the role of this CC, which is clutch and camera down, I can see by your leg. leg. Yeah, so the one more biggest advantage of robotic system is that everything is under the control of the surgeon. So in, in laparoscopy, if I have to do a very good surgery, then I need a very good uh, camera person also. Someone who is trained in uh, uh, you know laparoscopy. However good a nurse is in trained in laparoscopy, surgeons differ. So the style of one surgeon is different from the style of another surgeon. Some surgeon may want the camera to be shown very, very close to the tissues. Another surgeon may want it to be shown from far. And the way, the angles, all those things, you know, they're... All of us are different people, so our styles will be different. So every time your camera person has to be very much accustomed to your style of surgery. And when we are retracting something, say during major surgery, if we are retracted a gallbladder and given to another uh, assistant nurse. So that retraction has to be constantly at the same pressure, same place, same force. Everything has to be same throughout the procedure. So for at least two hours, it has to be same. Imagine if we are holding something for more than 10 minutes, the tremor will start and the our hand will move by at least two millimeters that is the general tendency so you can try that if you you hold a pen still for one hour yes you will know that after 10 15 minutes the position of the pen would have changed by at least two millimeters yes. so that means in laparoscopy that possibility of movement is there from where we have started the original procedure so coming to this uh, slide what you can see down foot uh, cc is written yellow and uh, blue so the yes. All the energy sources, the monopolar, bipolar controls are there. And these two hands, what I'm using, they are called as the joysticks. So I will be controlling the whole of the movement of the instruments by these two joysticks. So if I move here, the instrument moves there. Is that the patient? So, but you know that there are only two hands I have got and there can be only two joysticks. But the instruments are four. So we use... There are called as clutch, uh, camera clutch and the uh, instrument clutch. So when I press or tap on the instrument clutch, I can move from one instrument to another instrument. In the sense that, say, I'm having a penetrated bi bipolar and one Babcocks as two instruments. Both the two instruments I can handle with my left hand by tapping one uh, button at the foot end. Okay. If I tap once, then the uh, Babcocks will become active. If I tap other time, the bipolar will become active. So... When I was giving an example of retraction of the gallbladder, so in, in laparoscopy, if I tell one of the junior nurses to retract the gallbladder, she may push more or uh, you know relax that uh, it may go out of the view. Yes. In robotic, what I do is I put a back box, push the gallbladder how much ever I want, and then that I tap the instrument. So that 
Babcock is frozen now. Oh. Even eight hours, ten hours, still like give instruction for that instrument to move, it will not even move my one micromillimeter also. That means there is no margin of error, no tremors, no fatigue for the instruments and also for the hands. So that is the biggest advantage. And then I can start operating with the two instruments. When I'm operating, if I want the gallbladder to be retracted more, then I can tap this one and again move the gallbladder some more, again tap it, again it will stay frozen. Second thing is there's a camera clutch. Camera clutch will help me to zoom the camera inside, zoom the camera outside. So during surgery, when there is some sudden bleeding, we want the camera person to move the camera very close to the area of the bleeding so that we can see the bleeding and control that one. But if the camera person is not very adept or is not uh, synced with our uh, wavelength, then he may not be showing uh, the camera very close and there might be some amount of blood loss. But here, because the camera is under my control, so I can move the camera inside, outside, zoom in, zoom out to the left, right, as, as I want. It is like a car, where you're driving a car, you yes. want you want the steering, clutch, accelerator, brake, everything yes. under you, isn't it? Yes. Imagine you are driving the steering and uh, your uh, other person is controlling the brake and clutch. How it will be? Yes. There will be definitely accident. Yes. So here, exactly same thing. In robotic system, I have got complete control of everything. Every instrument is under my control. Camera is under my control. Movement of the instruments are under my control. Pottery, bipolar, everything is under my control. The nurses are very important. Just because everything is under my control, it doesn't mean that nurses are not. Nurses are the most important part in the robot system near the patient side because they have to remove the instrument. They have to place the instrument properly. They have to give the alignment of the, all the patient card. Any problem is that they have to immediately act there. So this is how a robotic uh, system works. So uh, session is becoming more and more interesting. Let us again, you know, view the, the rest of the slide. Yes. Yeah. So yes. here you see, uh, this is a, a video clip or? Yeah, this is a video clip where you know the nurses will, as you said, they yeah. receive the instructions. You can see here that I am moving the instruments there. Yes. Uh, you can see this is a live time. So this is how the patient card, see all the nurses. There are only one nurse who is scrubbed in. Yes. The other nurse is scrubbed because we have we are training her. Yes. She's watching. So yes. she's just seeing what the things are happening. There are others who are watching the system. So hardly one nurse is enough. Whatever instruments I move there, uh, it uh, moves there at the patient level. So all these things move only with the, in uh, tandem with the, the robotic system. So again, you can see I'm moving both the hands. Yes. When I'm moving both the hands, I'm using the clutch there. Yeah, play this video. You can play, Suja, just a minute. Uh, you can yes. just play and pause here. Yeah. yeah. We can, can see. see it. We can see, yeah. So I'll be talking while I'm operating. I'll tell one of our nurse to use suction or I'll tell you see if the instruments are clashing. Uh, you can see the instruments are moving. There. That is the patient uh, cart. Yes. And that is the camera. They are able to see what is happening. I am seeing at the surgeon console. They are seeing what is happening here. Yes, yes. So if there is a you know bleeding and all, how do we control bleeding? That again, you have the control, right, sir? Yeah, I have the control. Yeah. They will at the most they will. Uh, I'll ask them to do a suction or I'll ask them to give me a gauze piece. So they will put a gauze piece through the one of the trocar instrument. I use the gauze piece. Oh. So if supposing I am not seeing something, you know. Surgery is not done by surgeon alone. All of us know that. Nursing assistants play an important role. Sometimes there will be some bleeding which the surgeon might not be seeing. He will be concentrating at some other area. So I was just, as I was telling the nurses can mark on the screen. It's a sterile one. They can mark and say, sir, you can see here there is some bleeding. The bleeding is coming from here. Because, uh, you know, not to just uh, pamper in front of all of you. Most, see, 30 to 40 percent of my bleedings are controlled by my nurses. Oh, great. That's a very great. Yeah, so they'll tell, sir, uh, we will use this bipolar, the bleeding is coming from there, bleeding is coming from here, they put artery clamps and all. So, here in robotic, we don't miss that. Because of the monitor, because of AI, they can mark that and I can see that mark in my surgeon console. Oh, great, yes. Yes, Jack, go on. Come on. So this is the uh, setup which we have seen already. So let's have a discussion on robotic GI surgery. It's minimally invasive and laparoscopic technique. Surgeon performs delicate surgery like complex hernia, 
and however there will be fewer complications we can see through yeah that is the advantage because as i said in laparoscopic surgery is very good there is a minimal invasive surgery keyhole surgery we can see the things better but compared to laparoscopy in robotic system we are seeing 10 to 12 times more magnification than laparoscopy already laparoscopy was little more magnified compared to open surgery but we are having 10 to 12 times more magnification and we are having the 3d vision so when you have these two things that means you are able to see the things very clearly all the tissues are uh, you know delineated much better even small bleedings we can arrest very quickly so and also because of the movements of the instruments are more the range of movements in um, a robotic system the range of movements is almost 270 degrees that means more than what my wrist can move the instrument uh, i can move and also there are seven ranges of movements so all these movements will help in doing the surgery more de de delicately and with the less tissue trauma least bleeding and more uh, appropriately so all this will translocate translate into having lesser complications early recovery lowest possible uh, bleeding yes so let's understand yeah, regarding the gastro intestinal surgery which are the parts comes under it's like esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and rectum yes we can go on yeah yeah 11th 11th one so here let us see the indications for the gastro intestinal surgery like gastrectomy gastric bypass gastric bypass is nothing but it uh, help us to reduce the weight then all types of hernia Bipples. Bipples is the surgical procedure of removal of a tuber from pancreas and bariatric polycystectomy and colorectal surgery. So, sir, if you look, we are looking at the indications and uh, you know many of your blogs and all everything we have read gone through. Like, I mean, the the uh, surgery like a gastric bypass and uh, the bariatric, which is done through robotic, yeah, and then the open. The, mm -hmm. the hours are, I think, robotic will take less hours than the open surgeries. Yeah, definitely, it will take lesser time and uh, lesser complications, um, and uh, with more precision. Yeah, yes. definitely. See, any surgery that we do by open procedure earlier can now be safely done by robotic surgery. Robotic, yes. And from nursing point of view, robotic surgery is, is a huge advantage because. open surgery imagine in a whipple side do a big open surgery i put a incision i close and go there's lot of work for the nurses cleaning putting the sutures clips dressing all that in robotic surgery as soon as i go out in 5 minutes my nurse is also coming behind me also because all she has to do is put three small plasters and come out sir a great so, advantage great yeah. advantage yes So let's have a uh, look on what are the benefits of robotic surgery. It's mainly uh, mainly based on precision based. What is the meaning of precision based? It's nothing but it will be very careful, accurate, and targeted, and risk will be very less of infection. Pain will be less, and the scar won't be there, and uh, bleeding will be very minimal. Shorter hospital stay, and uh, recovery will be very fast, and clinical outcome will be safe. we can also go for to the drawbacks and then we will ask uh, okay so the drawback uh, which we can see like a tactile feedback here uh, the sense of touch will be missing and the instrumentation so here yeah. like like you all were operating one fine day you were operating with the open and then suddenly switch to the robotic so what is you know the importance of sense of touch and the instrumentation challenges we would yeah. like to so this was the only problem till now about tactile feedback that means whenever you touch something say you touch your other finger you should get a feeling that you are touching that finger and then you will know how much force you have applied to touch that finger same way in any surgery when we are trying to hold a tissue when we are trying to take a suture we want to assess the thickness of the tissue how deep we have to take the bite or how delicately we have to take the bite so for that tactile feedback that means when we touch something we should get a feedback of how much pressure we are using to hold that tissue that tactile feedback in robotic in the current robotic system it is not there but in the next generation of robotic system the tactile feedback is also coming so this drawback is a temporary um, drawback only and also i don't say it is a permanent dra drawback because after doing 7 to 10 cases we get an assessment of the tactile feedback of the surgery regarding the instrumentation it is only the availability okay 
So availability of the robo, availability of the instruments is uh, only one um, uh, issue. Otherwise, I don't, uh, just because we have to complete that, uh, this thing we have to uh, tell this. Otherwise, I don't see real disadvantages of um, robot. Any, anything, yes, yeah. that's very, very great, sir. Yeah. Let's have a look initial, initial assessment. Once we received the patient, we should have an initial assessment. That is detailed assessment of the patient and the st hemodynamically stability we need to check and medications, fast surgical history and radiology and laboratory investigations, which is addressed by the consultant. Yeah, you can go. Yeah. Yeah. Next, the nursing management. pre operatively what are the responsibility nurse should carry? The patient should be NPM. PSC has to done. PSC means a pre and a suture checkup. And preoperative checklist also should be done by the nurse. And the nurse must uh, confirm that consent must have taken. Then bowel preparation, IV fluid as advised. Then collection of all the reports, imaging and laboratory result. Here we have to focus on any critical value. If we find any critical value, we need to inform to the team members as early as possible. And here, hand over all the documents like images, reports, and medical documents to the OT nurse and administer the antibiotic, which is advised by the consultant. Yes, I think we are going with this uh, protocol itself, sir. Do you find any non compliances or you would like to message? Uh, give a yeah. oh, this, um, this is just like any other routine uh, procedure, but uh, at least in uh, show the high tech city, it is very strict. The surgical safety checklist is so strict, nurses, our nurses are so strong. They won't allow me to put an incision unless the checklist is all completed. Unless we have completed the site, the information of the team members. They have a big checklist. We have to be there, sign the consent, ship the patient, complete the checklist. There are many times where they have not allowed me to put incision. Because the CT scan imaging was not put on the uh, view board. They said, please, sir, wait. You can't start. Wait. So, no one, uh, my nurses are my bosses. Yeah, the, the nurses are leading with the empowerment role, yes. Thank you. Yes, so viewers at High Tech, uh, you know, Yashoda, just kindly take the mark which has been provided. Entire team, congratulations. Yes. Okay. Let's uh, have a patient safety is very much important. So the nurses should be followed very strictly right from the beginning of the patient safety from patient identification to pre prevention of patient falls. You can go on as under the post-operative management, the nurse has to take care. Here she has to monitor the vitals and the IV fluid and IHR. It should be a hundred percentage compliance and care of catheter and drains, pain management. Here the major role of nurse is she has to assess the pain. If the pain score is more than three, she should go for in, she should escalate it to the consult team and intervention should be taken. Once the intervention is start, periodically she has to go for the reassessment and it should be documented in the medical records. Then encourage incentive spirometry, monitor the site of surgery for any sign of infection, and we should start the diet from the beginning of liquid diet, then we can uh, go to the solid diet. Yeah. We can quickly, uh, quickly go through the discharge advice also, and then we will continue. Yeah. These are the take-home advice we can give to the patient. Uh, it's a regular follow-up. Then I early ambulation, we need to encourage regarding the normal diet, then we should uh, educate them if any variations, if they find they need to consult the consultant. So here we have come to the uh, next slide. We have come to the end of the conclusion. Yes. And uh, I think the session was not enough. We felt like to hear more from you, sir. Until yeah. today, we were thinking that, you know, robots will be just doing the surgery. Surgeon will be just standing and you know guiding the robot, but here we would understand now today that what is the role of console and your all the two other cards. Yes, sir, would you agree with this contraindication and uh, the conclusion notes from your end to the entire nurses? Yeah, so I would agree with this uh, contraindication as a related contraindication because robo fixing the robo and all will take time if the team is uh, new. So once it's uh, experienced in like here now any major hemorrhages, any major bleedings, emergencies, critical also, we do robotic surgery. But it cannot be said the same when the new robotic system is started. So to start off until we have got our learning curve right and the team composition is right, every team member is uh, trained completely and uh, they are all uh, you know, confident, till such time we should uh, go by this contraindication of not being critically ill patient by robotic surgery. So uh, thank you so much. We have come to the uh, end of the discussion and uh, thank you, sir.
uh, in spite of your very busy schedule, you have contributed so much. We all nurses thank you from the you know heartfelt gratitude to you. And uh, we end the session. Thank you, Suja, for your great contribution. You, and we'll love to have uh, hear more from your answer. In uh, yeah. yes, thank you so much. We end the session.